So Google has announced a new version of Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can see this one, 506, that's the new version in preview and I have access to it here. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go and take it for a test run. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and upload a YouTube video so I can just provide the YouTube URL. So I'm just going to provide it here. And this is a nice video from Tree Blue One Brown and it explains what LLMs are. So it explains briefly what the concept of LLMs are in, I believe, in less than 10 minutes. I'm going to add to prompt. And basically what I want to do with this is I want to be able to generate some type of asset. I want to be able to generate an interactive web application from this that could allow students to learn more about this topic of LLMs. But I want to ground it based on the content in this video. So I'm going to prompt it something like, can you please generate an interactive slide deck explaining the concepts introduced in the video. Please generate an HTML page with all the JavaScript and CSS code. Please provide simulations where applicable to help learners learn better about the topics. Feel free to use a visualization tool like D3.js to provide additional visualizations that help explain concepts. Go. Cool. So again, I'm using this model here. Keep note of the token count. This one is using about 138,000 tokens. So it's ready to go. I'm just going to go hit run here. And now it's going to start to think. This is the 2.5 Pro model. So it's the model that can generate thinking tokens before it sends a response back and I'm expecting an HTML. So let's see what it does. All right, so it's doing the thinking already. So I'm just gonna expand this to show you. So what it's doing, okay, the user wants an interactive slide deck in HTML format explaining the concepts from the video. So it says there are different steps, content extraction, interactivity, visualization, and then the implementation itself or key concepts from the video. So it's now going to extract key concepts from the video. I want it to be grounded in this video specifically. All the examples and explanations, those are the things that I want. The reason I did it this way is because I think Tree Blue One Brown provides excellent explanations that can be widely accessible. However, a lot of people prefer to learn from text or slides. And so this basically should complement this video that I've provided to the model. All right. So those are the concepts that will be covered. And then it says interactive slide deck plan. And so it's going to create some interactivity, I guess. So I'm very curious to see if it does well there. Now, according to Google, this particular model has been improved specifically on coding. So it should be better at generating these type of applications. All right, so it generated all that thinking process and now it's going to generate the HTML that I asked it for. So it's doing the CSS there. I can see it. That's very cool. All right, so it's getting into the HTML part. Now, there's a lot of information that's coming into this application. I can see it. This is a really good test, I think, because it first needs to reason about the content in the video and then it's going to use its reasoning capabilities for that. Then it needs to figure out how to set up a slide deck based on that content, right? So maintain the structure of the content and so forth and also add interactivity and potentially some visualizations as well. So it's a lot that I'm asking, but I think if we're going to challenge these AI models on coding tasks, this is a sort of creative task that I'm interested in testing these models for. So this is great for education purposes. And these are the type of use cases that I'm really interested in, like research use cases, education use cases. So I'm very excited about the result here. This is a super long HTML file that is generating. Another thing that I could have done is probably create the file separately. I wanted to do it this way because I just wanted to copy this. So I'm going to copy the code and I'm taking it over to my IDE. I have a tested HTML file here. I'm just going to paste that entire code. So it's almost around 800 lines of pure HTML, obviously with the JavaScript and CSS also integrated here. And I'm going to save that. And then I'm just going to also use WinSurf to preview this because I can preview it right away here. I don't really need to use the browser. So that's an easier way also to leverage these systems, preview the HTML. And then I'm just going to provide it HTML there. So it has a context and I'm just going to submit that. It's just going to run a simple server here. You can see that it's running that. So I'm going to accept that and then it's going to preview it. So that's pretty fast. All right. So the previous here. All right. So here is the actual slide deck and it has 20 slides. Okay. And I like the colors, by the way, it's nice. I did not tell it to use any kind of like colors or anything like that. It just chose this color. So it has this weird preview here. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Let's look at the information. Let's look at whether there is some interactivity here or there are some visualizations. All right, so the core idea here about next word prediction. So it says, at your heart, LLMs are incredibly sophisticated systems for predicting the next token in a sequence of text. So try it. Type a short phrase and see a very simplified prediction. So I'm going to say the capital of France. I'm just going to say capital of France and predict next word. The capital of France predicted next word is king. This is a toy model. So what if I say is, 
you can see Jing. So it's just generating random text. This doesn't necessarily have to be Paris or anything like that. It's just showing you what the concept of next word prediction is, and it's simulating that. This is not using a language model. I could also use a language model to make this more realistic, but that's kind of basically the idea here. So that would be an improvement that I would implement here as a next step. But this is so cool, like it's interactive and also it's like really neat. Color of it and the styling is really nice as well. So let me go to next. So autoregressive generation. LLMs generate longer text by predicting one word, adding it to the input and then predicting the next word based on the new longer input. This is called autoregressive generation. So enter a starting phrase once upon a time. So you can see again, it's generating just random words, but it's showing you that it can do this autoregressive generation, right? Generate longer text by predicting one word, adding it to the input and then predicting the next word and so forth. So this is about predict probabilities. So the Paris is a city in show probabilities. And you can see that it says France, the country France, and it shows all the different probabilities. And so the higher the probability, the more likely the LLM thinks that word come next. So that's the idea. This is nice because that's basically what these LLMs are. They are probabilistic systems. Interacting with a chatbot, when you use a chatbot, is essentially performing the next word prediction repeatedly. The whole conversation, including a hidden system prompt that sets the AI persona, becomes the input. So you're a helpful and concise AI assistant. That's the system prompt, and it's again shown hidden here. So let's say what is the capital of France. Something like that. I'm gonna send. So you can see AI says, hello, how can I help you today? The user says, what is the capital of France? And AI says, I'm a simple demo, but I know Paris is the capital of France. So again, just basic response here. This is not a real response from our model. This is just showing how the chatbot is actually working and that there is a hidden system prompt as well. Generally, this is how these chatbots like ChatGPT actually work. The role of randomness. And okay, so we're starting to see some more interactivity here. This is really nice. And then it says, click a button to see a word pick. So pick most likely. All right, so it's seeing this is the one that's picked most likely. Basically, the idea of temperature is you set a temperature and then that's going to dictate how random you want the output to be. So let's say uh, pick randomly weighted, so 0 0.9. So now it's going to choose Europe. That's how you can customize the type of outputs you're getting and control the diversity of the output. That's really nice. And it's showing that concept here. All right, this is more about training data. I'm going to skip this one. This is about parameters, the scale of computation. I really love these visualizations. They're really nice. And it's sticking to that theme of green, which is really cool. Again, this is on pre-training on RLHF. Uh, GPUs make it possible. So this is more about GPU training, uh, transformer revolution, word embeddings, talking to each other, words talking to each other. Okay, that's more about attention inside the transformer layer, final prediction step, all right, emergent step, conclusion. So this is more text and where to dig deeper and then it provides some resources here. So overall it's nice. So we had visualizations, we have interactivity. It would have been useful to provide like diagrams and so on. We didn't tell it explicitly to provide diagrams. So like things like this could be explained better with diagrams, but this is already pretty good. It even has some links down here and I think these links are actually working. And then it has access to the original video right here as well. Great. I'm very impressed by this. I think this is the kind of application that LLMs should be able to produce. And so we went from video to slides very easily and we can continue to sort of improve this. Very impressed by this model and I think it has a lot of potential for coding use cases.